Welcome to Stonewall at 50, a CUNY TV digital series celebrating Pride 2019. Hi, this is Merlin. Welcome to the fourth and final episode of Stonewall at 50. During Pride Month this year, we have explored the changes in American theater after Stonewall with Patrick Pacheco and Donna Hanover at Shea Josephine. So what has happened to the gay play in the last 50 years? The short answer, Donna, is that it's grown up. From before Stonewall, with Andrea Weiss and Greta Schiller, co-founders of Jezebel Productions, we learned how the riot started 50 years ago this weekend. These young people just said, screw you, we're not taking it anymore. And they just went out into the streets and said, we're fighting back. We discovered that intergenerational storytelling is a good way to learn about LGBTQ history with Wes Enos, founder of the Generations Project. Go easy on each other. A lot, of, a lot of young people don't know LGBT history and it's not their fault. And now for the fourth episode, let's salute the Pride Parade. Judy Garland dies just a week before Stonewall. Some say it was a factor along with everything else. Two weeks after Stonewall, people knocked down the fences at Woodstock, making it a free concert. Three weeks after Stonewall, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. It wasn't an easy time for many of us. There wasn't a lot of money to go around and no one was organized. You could be beaten up for no reason except they thought someone was a commie pinko fag. Well, at least that was my story. 1969 was also a romantic time for me, studying theater and art in college, working as an actor and touring the country that fall, and getting to meet America. That summer, I was working in ensemble theater with the Everyman Players at the beautiful Laurel Cove Amphitheater in Pineville, Kentucky, performing the Book of Job for vacationing audiences traveling from the Midwest to Florida for their summer vacations. So to hear that some kids in New York City were rioting and accused of really tearing up the place, I took two ways. One, what was that all about? And two, does this threaten my open and yet guarded life? I was surrounded by friends and what we would call allies today. I had no fear in the circle of friends or working in the theater company. It was when I was alone, I always looked over my shoulder for possible trouble. People were generally kind to be around. There wasn't the same sense of knowing that being gay or lesbian meant to the average person you would meet. This was before designing women and the big shoulders look. People just seemed to think you were like them. They were straight and thought everyone else was too. From my research on the timeline of LGBT history in New York City from Wikipedia, the proposal for the parade commemorating Stonewall was made that November at the Eastern Regional Conference for Homophile Organizations in Philadelphia. We propose that a demonstration be held annually on the last Saturday in June in New York City to commemorate the 1969 spontaneous demonstrations on Christopher Street. And this demonstration be called Christopher Street Liberation Day. No dress code or age regulations shall be made for this demonstration. In January 1970, a small group began organizing and planning the first march, creating the Christopher Street Liberation Day Umbrella Committee. The Oscar Wilde Memorial Bookshop let the committee use their customer mailing list. Moving to New York in the spring of 1973, my first parade was from Central Park South to Washington Square. I remember coming uptown to Central Park from my East 4th Street and Avenue D Village apartment and watching paraders getting ready. Then standing on the corner of Central Park South watching everyone march out of the park 
for the venue in Washington Square. It turned out several of my future best friends and my first boyfriend in New York were at the same parade. The parade in those days was mostly just people having fun in groups with signs. I waited and watched till nearly the end. Nothing bad had happened while I was standing there. And there were so many of us that I felt safe. And I joined with the stragglers at the back of the parade marching downtown. It was exhilarating to be in a liberation parade. It was something to be out and in public and proud. There we were, marching to the village. When we got to Washington Square, the site was amazingly organized and the crowd filled the park. Bathhouse Betty, Bette Mittler, sang that day at the Washington Square gathering. She sang, you gotta have friends, to a roaring appreciative crowd who were viewing one of the first celebrity sightings at a large gay event ever. Besides the Continental Baths, where Miss Midler and Barry Manilow became famous for doing what they do best. That was also the same parade event in 1973 that Sylvia Rivera gave her now famous gay power speech. I will no longer put up with this shit. I have been beaten. I have had my nose broken. I've been thrown in jail and I've lost my job. I have lost my apartment for gay liberation. Looking up at Miss Rivera on that tall stage, she was overpowering. I felt her desperation. I felt her honesty. I heard her screaming at me and everyone else about issues that were as important then as they are today. Even today, there are trans women in prison and trans people are being murdered in this country. I don't know when they first started the parade, but Nothing beats the roar of dykes on bikes to start the parade. Here are two pics from the 1979 parade. And there is Sybil Brunchen riding in the 1985 parade, muscles and all. After becoming the Empress of the Imperial Court of New York, Empress Sybil Brunchen walked the parade in her coronation gown with some help from the crowd, it would appear. 1994 was the summer everyone came back to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Stonewall, and the city was packed. I'd never seen so many friendly gay faces in my life. Now, I can't prove this. I have no video clips or pics. I was in the entourage of, you may say, tagging along, Mr. Def Leather for 1994. In 2005, Hillary joined the parade with high hopes and has shown her support for our community ever since. QDTV dove into the 2009 parade. And we have just seen in order uh, gay cops followed by the Stonewall veterans. And now passing us is the Gay Firemen's League. Daniel, how did we come so far from the quiet protest of 1979 to this extravaganza. It's incredible, right? So everybody in unison, when they were chanting that night, out of the closet and into the streets. Out of the closet and into the streets. Daniel Horowitz and Lisa Kovacs actually plunged into the parade and found two prescient politicians marching. Daniel O'Donnell, New York State Assemblyman. What do you think, it's the 40th anniversary of Stonewall, what do you think New York signifies for gay Americans? Well, it's the birthplace of our gay rights movement. It's where everything changes, and change is supposed to happen here first. A little behind the eight ball on marriage equality, but I'm pushing as hard as I can to fix that. And what do you think, are we gonna catch up? I'm getting married by the end of the year, here sure. in New York, yes That's I am. Plan. All right, well good luck with that. Thank you. Happy Pride. Happy Pride to you and Scott Stringer, who is now the New York City Comptroller. And I think that elected officials who are not making this a priority, who think they can dodge this, I think are making a big political error, and I think you can see it and sense it at this parade more than any other time in the history of the movement. In 2016, after the Pulse nightclub massacre, Sarah Foti, Wilson Reyes Moreno, and I came downtown and joined the Latin Club celebration and met paraders who had been affected by the Pulse attack. 
mensaje está inspirado en mis amigos en Orlando, por eso son 49 mariposas. Vengo con, Vengo con la familia, mi, mi primo, primo, primo y las, y las niñas. niñas, siempre. Oh, mira, mira, leen el cartón, inglés, Spanish. Yo tengo dos mamás y dos, y dos tíos. 200, 250 personas marchando con nosotros, con una bandera inmensa que compone a todas las banderas de países latinoamericanos, incluyendo España, haciendo presencia a ese nivel. Y esta marcha se da consecuencia del Stonewall Rebellion. I can remember in Shreveport climbing out of a trap door at the back of a gay bar in the 1960s, not wanting to deal with a police raid. I can remember the way we were treated when I was a kid by almost everyone. So today I really want to thank the police commissioner, James O'Neill, for his acknowledgement of the police actions at the time of Stonewall. It is good to see someone beginning to get it. Well, I'm certainly not going to stand up here and pretend to be an expert on what happened at Stonewall. I do know what happened should not have happened. The actions taken by the NYPD were wrong, plain and simple. The actions and the laws were discriminatory and oppressive, and for that, I apologize. This isn't the na-na moment. Too many people have suffered from the authority figures for too long. Please remember, the wrath of homophobia didn't happen at Stonewall here in New York City. These assaults on human rights have been going on for many years before 1969. Hell, Oscar Wilde was imprisoned in 1895. I've walked in the parade several times since 1973. It is very different now. You can't imagine how it feels to sashay down Fifth Avenue through the years and feel the difference in the crowds. Not only are the crowds bigger, you don't see the God hates fags signs as you used to. And then to arrive in the village and see people pouring out of their windows and doors, standing on steps and screaming in joy at the top of their lungs at you because you're in the parade. Today. I've been getting a lot of compliments today. I came all the way out from Poughkeepsie, oh um, New York, and I'm a carefree black girl. Very and good. It's my first pride, and the first year since I came out. Wow, so, yeah. I've been out for a while. I'm a late in life out. Person. No, you're not. You're <laughs> just in time. Just, <laughs> just in time. time. I waited for you. you yeah, waited exactly. For me. <laughs> exactly. Did you enjoy today? I loved it. You marched in the yeah, parade. Yeah, I marched in the parade. It's so my, isn't it amazing the way the people scream at you? It was so great. I felt like I was famous. Yeah, <laughs> it really. It really You is. look beautiful. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too, Thank sir. you. You as well. Bye. Bye. The Pride Parade is the last Sunday in June every year. Get on down and join in. My old crowd, long since gone, would meet at the corner of 10th Street and 5th Avenue. <laughs> Start a new tradition. Find a new group of friends to celebrate with, or a cause to walk in for the parade. Join in and salute those that came before, who have struggled like Marsha P. Johnson, who legend tells us through the first rock, and Sylvia Rivera, who made us understand. This is our history. Let's learn and build on it for everyone. We can enrich all our lives just by being ourselves. This has been Stonewall at 50, a CUNY TV digital series celebrating Pride 2019. Thank you for joining us. Happy Pride.